and today I'm going to teach you how to draw a crow using simple techniques. I always start with the simple geometric shapes that I see in any object. And with a crow, the first big shape I see is a big oval for its torso. And then we go on to the neck, which is basically like a cylinder, and the head is a circle. And you're just building up the crow using simple geometric shapes, and you're really loose and relaxed. So you see the beak is a triangle, the legs are little rectangles, the claws are little triangles. And I just keep sort of gently going around the drawing and building up these forms using my charcoal stick. And we continue on doing this, the oval of the wings. And I'm looking around, considering where I should go next. And so now that I have all the guidelines laid down, I'm going to start adding a little bit of detail and formalizing the shape of my crow, adding a circle for the eyes, using the guidelines underneath to build more details on top. I split the beak in half with a line and then now start working around the torso to start finalizing the organic shape of the crow. I take my time and I'm sort of going a little bit darker than I did with my guidelines, but not quite totally black yet. And starting to add more details like the shapes of feathers, now the shape of the wing and feathers on top of the wing and just flowing along with the guidelines that I placed underneath but not totally sticking with them. Note that we're not erasing the guidelines, we're keeping them under because it makes a much more interesting drawing for the audience to look at to see all that stuff happening underneath. And I start to build a little bit more detail along the claws, again with rectangles, little triangles, little circles for the claws, the balls of the toes, I don't even know what you would call it on a crow. And then now I'm going to use the side of my charcoal stick to block in big, bold, more fatter guidelines, I would call it, where we're starting to block in shadow and darkness and really making the form come out. And I'm going along the head of the crow and along the neck and getting a little bit more bolder with my strokes and I'm using the side of my charcoal stick. And again, notice how relaxed and loose I am, and I keep working the whole of the drawing. And then I interchange with using the sharp end of my charcoal stick, and now I'm starting to get bolder with the darks. I'm digging in and go doing black, strong strokes, being very flowy, and I draw basically from my shoulder as opposed to just from my wrist. So I'm really like moving along as I pull my hand along the paper and we start to dig in more along the guidelines that we originally laid down but now getting bolder in terms of finalizing the shape of the crow. Along the bottom of the torso and coming down to the legs and deciding where those little details are going to go. I'm feeling that underneath guideline main geometric shapes. You can still see the ovals and the rectangles, the triangles, everything that we started out with. It's basically how I form any drawing. You'll also notice that I start, as I dig deeper and get darker lines, I start to use my fingers sometimes to start smudging and laying out shadow and darkness and drawing basically using my fingers. Add now even more detail, like the little ribs along the legs of the crow, getting in and adding more and more. You're just building up and sculpting out the crow over time. Drawing is basically very similar to sculpting, especially when you use a charcoal stick because it's so easy to rub and smudge it. And now I go back to the head and start taking a look at how I want to f finalize the shape of this crow's head. They have quite a lovely shape to their head that makes them distinctly a corvid or a crow. There's a little bit of feathers along the top of the beak that makes him feel quite regal. And I start to add those in, just rubbing along, again sculpting out the crow. Now I start to add details in the eye. We can't get very detailed with a big charcoal stick like this, but we can still sculpt out little highlights. I'd like to leave a little bit of white on the pupil of the crow to make it look like it's shiny. But if you've gone too far, that's okay because we'll get in there later with an acrylic paint. But basically leaving a little highlight in the eye 
makes it pop out and makes it look alive. And now I slowly just start to enjoy the whole of the drawing. I keep moving along the entire drawing and then stopping in areas and doing detail work. And basically my eye runs along the whole crow the whole time. I don't get, try not to get stuck in one area. I try to treat the whole drawing as one. Some people can draw very detailed from one end to the other. I tend to sort of build up the whole drawing over time. And the feathers at the back of the tail, I build very much the same way. I make the shapes organic from the original geometric lines. The beak I split in half and then do that classic, little bit of a hooked bill or beak on the crow. Try to make them look crow-like. At times he'll sort of flow in and out of looking like a duck or a seagull, but trust the process and enjoy it. And now it's time to get bold and really dig in with the darks. You can never go wrong by going too far. My teacher used to tell me that if we went so far as to make our whole paper black, then we had succeeded and he'd give the person an A. So it's better to go too far with the blacks, I think, and we can always dig it out later, which I'll show you how to get up the lights. And so far we haven't used an eraser because I don't use it to fix things, I use it to draw with, and we'll come to that later on in the drawing. So now we're starting to get bolder and I put away my stick for a bit so I can use my hands to really start sculpting out the crow now. And this is where it starts to feel more like working with clay than with drawing. And you just enjoy rubbing around and really making it more, not flesh-like because he's feathered, but it really just makes him sink into the paper a bit more lushly. And again, it's, it's okay to go too far because we can dig out the little whites and highlights later. But you can see how now we start to feel like it's more of a black shiny crow and it has a softer more organic look as I rub and sculpt around those drawings and again I'm really digging hard so you can't go too wrong. And I'm rubbing around again treating the whole drawing the same I'm just sort of getting to know my drawing this way too by really just rubbing the whole shape and feeling the shape of a crow and as I do it in my mind I do ha keep in mind that classic formal shape of a bird which is one of my favorite shapes in nature for sure and so now I'm going to get an eraser and I like to wa uh, use these white rubber erasers and a new one will have the sharp edges which I need to dig out the white in the crow, but sometimes you'll have an old rub down eraser that's nice and round, so if you do, you just cut off the eraser, a little piece of it, so you get a sharp edge, and the sharp edge lets you draw out the light. And so I just enjoy f using the eraser to dig out the light. We're not fixing anything, we're actually drawing with the eraser. And note how I go along the action line of the feathers. It's flowing from the front to the back along the shape of that crow. And underneath that crow, we still have that beautiful oval shape of the torso. And that's still under there. And we can feel it. We can feel the structure of the crow there. And I'm using the eraser now to give the illusion of little shiny feathers. Because the crow has a nice oily sheen to it. And note how the eraser just makes things pop out and feel more vibrant and alive. I can dig out the white light between the legs and then... Just by drawing quick lines along the legs, they make it look like they're a little bit shiny. It's pretty magical. And you can blow away the excess eraser. And then I go back to the head and just start to sculpt them out. The little detailed feathers along the beak. Sometimes it's hard, so you have to just sort of hold the paper in a certain way and dig right in there. If your eraser gets too um, blunt, then you can just cut another piece off and make sharper edges again and work around the eye. Again, you can't really go too far with this one. You can, If you don't like what you did, you can just rub it and get the black back in there, or you can add more charcoal, which we will in a bit. But right now, we've sort of gone another layer and brought out the light. And I've taken, picked up my charcoal stick again, and now I'll go back to adding more details of blackness. So this is yet another layer on top of the crow. And we just play with lights and darks and blacks and I'm getting even bolder now than I have before and digging into areas of shading, making them three-dimensional. 
And then now focus a bit on his head and really try to get out that regal crown, I guess, and a crow. And then as I go along and do little details here and there, I just enjoy letting the drawing now take care of itself. I just sort of let him flow around, pick up the eraser or the charcoal as I need to, and interchange with digging out whites and adding more black highlights. And you're really just enjoying the process of having sculpted out this crow. And he's really getting close now to being fully formed. I'm a little bit, you know, stuck, I think, on the crown, so then I go back and dig in details as I need to. I want the beak of a certain shape. I'll erase him out. Just do what you feel is right at this point, because you'll just, as your mind just relaxes, you'll know what to do. And this is really good brain gym because we're really doing something that we don't usually do in our everyday life when we start to turn off all our usual anxieties and thoughts like this by just losing yourself in a drawing and letting you, yourself just play with eraser, with charcoal and just enjoying the form that you're building and it's just simply organic form. Now I'm going to play with the background and I picked up my charcoal stick again and I'm using the side of it and just gently rubbing in the negative space around the crow. This is a really fun exercise to do because you're paying attention to what happens not just inside the crow but what happens around the crow. You can even try an exercise where the only thing you draw is the negative space and then the crow kind of forms within it. That's a lovely exercise. But right now I'm just sort of taking a look at what's this dynamic interesting shapes that happen with this particular paper that I'm doing by lightly rubbing the charcoal all around this crow and paying attention to the shape that the crow makes. And then I'm going to outline him a bit stronger to make him stand out from that background and know how bold I am. So we keep getting bolder and bolder and bolder with our darks. And let him like really stand out there. And I like to use uh, now white acrylic paint to give the next layer to this crow. And I use a little sharp uh, or fine brush. And I just take a little dab of white acrylic paint and add little highlights here and there on the crow. So for example, in the eye, you just pick up little lights. Don't think too much when you're doing this. Just sort of move along the drawing and add little bits of paint here and there because it really gives a nice glimmer of light on this next layer and it's a lovely way to just pick up the shine of the crow's feathers but it's also an interesting way to not treat the whole drawing the same so that certain parts have acrylic paint, certain parts have just charcoal, certain parts are sketchier, certain parts are more detailed because when an audience looks at a drawing if it's treated all the same way it gets kind of boring but with this sort of added little layers and details here and there it just brings it out in an interesting way for the eye to roam around. So the white acrylic paint is a lovely way just to add little details and it makes the eyes shiny. It brings out just little bits and pieces here and there in the tail feathers, in the crow's legs. And you don't need much, you just need a little dabble here and there. You just let it go, let it be loose and not think too much. And I go back and add little bits of highlight within the crow's feet to pick them up out from the background. And it's just really loose dabble. So note how I'm not like going into major details or anything. It's just quick and simple and not thinking too hard. Now I'm going to take my nice, lovely, soft pastel. This one's very lush. And I'm going to rub it along the negative space around the crow, just like we did before with the side of the charcoal. And look how loosely and boldly I'm doing it. I'm just going for covering the negative space with lots of material because I'm going to use my hands now to rub out the negative space and let this crow sort of reside within this lovely atmosphere. And it's just a way for you to really feel the crow within a space. So we're not just doing a floating crow in the middle of a sheet. We're really giving him an area in which to just exist. And it's just so much fun to 
really used this lovely soft pastel to sculpt again, to bring out that crow. And using your hands to draw is a really important process because it really gets you in touch with a different level of drawing than being all sterile and just using your material without getting your hands dirty. It's important, it's important to me anyway, to get my hands nice and dirty and really use the hands as a drawing tool as well, just like we did with the eraser, just like we did with the charcoal. And also it just turns your mind off a bit to focus on this negative space around the drawing that you just did. And you can add as much or as little as you want, but I would go quite bold. And the black charcoal that we put on underneath gives a nice gray smudge to the original colorful pastel and it just makes him more it more organic and the crow sits in a more lovely space. I then go back and take little bits of eraser and add little highlights where I feel that the crow needs to stick out a bit more from the background. It's just a way for him to glow a little bit against the background. And we're almost done. You can give him a bit of ground to stand on by using the eraser feel the frame of the drawing and there he is you have drawn a crow using very very simple techniques of building geometric shapes to make guidelines and to finalize the form i hope you enjoyed it thank you